Lawrence O'Donnell, the liberal MSNBC host who rips President Trump every night, is taking some rather revealing shots at CNN. Here he is on ex Senator Al Franken's podcast. One third of the people on their payroll love Trump. So you're guaranteed on any hour of CNN to minimum one third of the programming will be supportive of Trump. Someone on their payroll saying, here's why Trump's right. And what, according to Lawrence, is MSNBC's approach to pro Trump voices? That's one of the reasons why Trump kind of wants you to watch CNN instead of MSNBC. Sure. Because he knows on MSNBC there will be no one defending him because we don't bring on liars. I don't bring on a liar. I won't do that. I sat down with Laura Logan, the former 60 Minutes correspondent, who's now working on long-form programming for Fox Nation called Laura Logan Has No Agenda, including a series on media bias. Laura Logan, welcome. Thank you. Lawrence O'Donnell, former Democratic staffer, slams CNN. By the way, the network doesn't even have anything close to one-third pro-Trump contributors, but he thinks CNN should be bashed for having at least a few voices defending Donald Trump? <laughs> well, I mean, how can you justify that? I mean, maybe as an opinion person you can, certainly not in terms of journalism, right, wouldn't you say? But look at this quote. Lawrence is bragging about a reason to watch his network, MSNBC. Trump, quote, knows on MSNBC there will be no one defending him. Imagine if a Fox conservative said the opposite. No one on Fox who will uh, attack President Trump. Well, that strikes me as the, the, the key component of what Lawrence O'Donnell said, right, that you should, you'll never see anyone defending Donald Trump on my show. While that may be true, is MSNBC treated the same way um, that, for example, a corresponding host would be treated on Fox, right? I mean, we both know the answer to that. And I think what the, uh, for me, the frustration is, aren't you going to apply the same standard to everybody? Yeah, in fairness, other MSNBC shows do have some pro-Trump defenders or administration officials. Now, you have said, and you got a lot of attention for this. The media are mostly liberal. Did you believe that when you started out many years ago at CBS, or is this a more recent conclusion? You know what's funny, Howie, is that I've uh, I just grew up believing that we were all right. <laughs> right all the time. We all agreed with each other. That's <laughs> kind of what it is, and it's you know I, I'm I'm old school. We always believed in being um, skeptical of everybody and doing your job. But I. Um, I think many of us are not aware of our own bias because um, because I never worked in a newsroom where people were not liberal and where people were not democratic. I didn't know I didn't know anything like that. It, people just didn't identify that way. So there's a certain group think you, you, everyone you know agrees with you and therefore that that's most, the right way. Yeah. Most journalists are uh, are liberal. That doesn't mean that you are not capable of being objective. It just means you might not be aware of the extent of your own bias. But do you think all of this has been exacerbated? Uh, during the Trump presidency and especially now during the Trump impeachment headed to a Senate trial that it's become more overt, more blatant? Well, you know the answer to that. You know it has, right? Of course it has because journalists are doing things today that they would never have done. They're in, in, they would, when, when would you put anonymous sources on who all come from with the same motivation? When would you put them on repeatedly even when you know that they, people have, your sources lied to you over and over and over again? Big lies, right? That, have, that everybody knows now are not true. You know, why would you do that? In the old days, you wouldn't do that. Why would you report on a dossier that you haven't verified? Especially when that dossier is, you know, the conclusions of it are so damaging and the right. consequences are so significant. You know, at, at those the are things time, that wouldn't have happened at, before. At the same time, even at some of these newspapers and networks that the president calls fake news, are there journalists who are trying to be fair? Of course. Well, I think of it's course. important they're to great make that journalists. distinction. Yeah. And there are journalists trying to be fair, but they're, you know, they're, they're, they're outnumbered by the journalists who aren't. And that creates a problem for all of us, and it creates a problem for the profession. And that's why, you know, I don't like being attacked and savaged and smeared. I don't like being presented as being right-wing when I'm not right-wing. I don't like being presented as anything I am when I'm not that. Right. On that point, your, your critics say, and you know this, that because you're now working with Fox Nation, maybe you're, you're saying these things because you're emerging as a conservative. You know what they say? They say, how can you, you may not have an agenda, but Fox sure does. Fox Nation sure does. I can't do anything about that, right? The work speaks for itself. And fortunately, I think people out there, they're starting to recognize the patterns and the tactics used in these smear campaigns. And you just, you know, sometimes I turn tables on other journalists and say, what, so all the people who watch Fox, they don't matter? 
right? I mean, if, you, if the country's moderate, at least say say half of America's on one liberal and or Democrat, and half of it's Republican. Oh, I mean, that's millions of people out there, you know, that that still um, that still matter. But it and can't discounting be, them, it is, can't it can't be comfortable uh, having your reputation shredded and, and and being attacked sometimes on partisan grounds uh, after all the years that you have spent reporting around the world. No, not comfortable, not fair, not honest, not right, and um, and also most importantly, I'm not the only one, right? And I mean, I'll just say the most blatant example that I can give is no one disputes that I was uh, raped in Egypt. It took me a long time to even be able to talk about some of the worst details. You of being were raped by a mob, you were, and you were almost killed. Gang raped yeah. and sodomized over and over and over again. And New York Magazine is quite okay reporting that I was groped. And nobody raises an objection to that. In the and you are suing New York Magazine. Well, I am suing New York Magazine. And you know what? It's uh, apart from the fact that um, you can argue about the motivation for it. It's not factually accurate, is it? It's not my side of the story versus their side of the story. It's actually not accurate. It's not fact. Since you have reported from war zones around the world and risked your life, I wanted to ask you about the journalistic focus on the disputed intelligence about the airstrike that killed uh, General Soleimani, Iran's top terrorist. Um, are reporters right to question the intelligence, particularly after President Trump said there were imminent threats against four embassies and other administration officials didn't quite embrace that language? You have to question everything as a reporter. So I would never say no to that question, right? I mean, of course you have to question intelligence. It's just um, how much does that does that dominate your coverage? That question is that driving your coverage? Right. Um, is that happening at the same time as you're also covering Soleimani in a, uh, for example, in a flattering way, or in a way that um, is not representative of the broader context? You know, it only picks one side. Right. And on that note, uh, the president tweeted this week that there were imminent threats, but he said, quote, it doesn't really matter because of his horrible past. Now, that may be true, but it wasn't the administration's original justification. That was Right, and, and also, that's the president's opinion, right? I mean, some people might disagree and say it does matter. And as a journalist, you can say, well, what I'm reporting on, it matters because of this. But those are the types of subjective decisions and judgments that we face every day in our work. And as reporters, we masquerade as being objective. We masquerade as being neutral. We masquerade as being, you know, completely without bias. Those things um, are, you know, they're not true and they're not, and they're unrealistic. But what is? Well, are you also saying that journalists have opinions? We're human beings. We form judgments, and therefore we should be more upfront about it. Or are you saying that, that Donald Trump, uh, who admittedly does things much differently than, than any other modern president, is is held to a completely different standard than his predecessors? I'm saying that as journalists. We should be honest and acknowledge our own bias, because that's part of protecting our work from our bias. I'm saying that we should stand up, all of us, for the objective standards of journalism. We know what they are. And, um, and then that also, we should hold ourselves to account. And you know what the president does, we don't control. And if you, if you say, you can justify, well, I'm, I'm doing this because it's a legitimate question to ask, when you look at the rest of the body of your reporting, is it, um, are you just doing it because it's a legitimate question, or are you doing it because you really don't like Donald Trump and have the chance to catch him in another, in another you know, lie or exaggeration yeah. or controversy is another chance to prove that you were right, he should never have been elected all along. There's a lot of that going on. And you know, when you talk about fake news, it doesn't just re refer to making up something. It also re refers to journalists falsely representing themselves as fair and objective when they're not. That's also what fake news means. And that is the heart of the matter. That is the question. Laura Logan, great to see you. Thanks very much for joining us. Thank you, Howie.